Good morning, Odysseyers. Mike Martin's here with the Mike Martin's channel. Thanks for joining me, being part of the channel, liking and subscribing. Well, <clears throat> I want to thank everyone for last night's Mike in the Night. Some people have stopped watching it because they say it's too toxic or there's too much. Um, it's just out of control. But when you get callers that call in and stuff happens and then you get actions and then you get reactions with other callers calling back and it's just the way of life, right? Anyways, episode 402 of Mike in the Night. And if you want to watch it from the beginning, the drama started in episode 400. <clears throat> All right. On Odyssey, though, it won't be here on YouTube. So, guys, <clears throat> I want to do a video. It's kind of important. Let's really discuss why we're here, why we got, why we've gotten to the place or why we have gotten to this. And I really want to wake people up not to, oh, this is not this and the news is lying. And I, forget all that crap. If you don't know that by now, then you'll never know what's going on. I want to talk. I want to talk Turkey here. OK. This is something that's been in the works. Started uh, accelerating because it goes before that in 2010. But it, it's, it really, if you want to get, it really started in 2008. Now, the reason why we're in this position that we're in and why things really started accelerating around 2010, it's very simple. Do you remember episodes we used to do of trends in the housing market back in 2017? Our two-hour housing discussion show where we would connect the dots across the Commonwealth. There's something that I said, and I said it many times in many videos. Our kids, for an, to get into the, an affordability level <coughs> into real estate, <clears throat> our kids that were under four years old at the time when I made the video are already entering a soccer match. They're starting the match, but they're already down 3-0. That's the situation that our kids were in back in 2017. They're losing 3-0. But wait, this is Canada. Wait, but this is Australia. This is New Zealand. How can it be so... How could wages be so out of whack from housing? It's it's That's so unfathomable. Well, it's happening. It happened. And then 20, 2019 hits, January. We're reading reports where people need to work 30, 40, 50 plus years to put a down payment on a home. <clears throat> average wage earners. And then we're reading reports of 2019 that doctors and stuff are fleeing the country, the, the great Canadian brain drain. Now, why are we in this position here with this? Well, they needed to create something so the people or the Western powers in power are not on the hook for the destruction of 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 a destruction of mass proportions that's going to affect every human being on earth. And not just the middle class. We're talking every human being on earth will be. So what do they need to do? Well, they need to eradicate, remove people from the uh, equation. Because this makes it easier for them to have to move into more of a socialist uh, regime. Because the people we put in power to make sure to protect our freedoms and sovereignties have been taking them away now <clears throat> we're in a position right now where now our children are losing two nothing when they get to our age they'll be losing two three nothing at a soccer match before it starts to buy food to buy food now here it goes. So the problem is, <clears throat> these people we put in power. Now, look up an article for me, please. The world would be in absolute chaos or a financial destruction if the city of London stopped laundering money. It's a video. You can look it up. I think I made the video too. This is an article from back in tw early 2019. Um, economists... Uh, all kinds of people were starting to see, like, we're in a huge heap of trouble. Our economies have been built off money laundering, uh, predominantly coming from China. You don't see Italians laundering money in from Italy, Portuguese, Iranians, 
in, at, at the likes that the Chinese communists have been doing. The Chinese brought in $46 billion in 2020 into Canada alone. $46 billion into Canada alone in 2020 during the height of the pandemic. So our country's leaders have sold out to the highest bidders. They don't give a crap if your job doesn't pay you enough to eat. That, that's done. So what do they do? 2019 started to hit hard. And that was the year of the protest. Where in 2019, protesters took to the streets. Chile, Argentina, Bolivia, Ecuador, um, Brazil, okay, Venezuela, all of Central America, America. I think except, I think Panama was the only country that wasn't in protest. But, but Nicaragua, Honduras, all those countries were, were in protest in 2019. I checked. Good swaths of the U.S., portions of Canada uh, for House. Uh, Canada, Canada, Canada and parts of America are completely brainwashed. They were protesting climate change. They weren't even protesting what they needed to protest. That was the mistake in 2019 that a lot of countries, like a lot of the Western countries like New Zealand, were protesting Stefan Molyneux coming there to speak and uh, all kinds of BS and stuff. So they, they, they were just more worried about bathrooms and who you gets to use what bathroom and that with the bathroom wars in 2019. So a lot of the Western countries weren't protesting the real thing. Countries like Lebanon, Syria, Iraq uh, uh, were protesting. The Russia, they were protesting the right things. They were protesting Hong Kong, um, uh, France. Countries like that were protesting, you know, Egypt were protesting the right thing. Like they were protesting the right sign, the signal, what they needed to get out. And lo and behold, the virus comes out of nowhere and wipes, it shuts every, doesn't wipe anybody out, shuts everything down. But then I started noticing in 2020, the amount of money that's being moved into Canada during the height of a pandemic from a country that it believed <coughs> to come from into Western countries and blostering the housing markets. Like they never, like there was, so you would think that housing was tied to wages the whole time. They never was. You actually think that they give a rat's penis about you and affording to, to live? No. And what did the what did the politicians do? A lot of them just allowed the fentanyl sales to continue and opioid sales. America now is taking note of it now in 2022. We were having this problem in 2010. It got worse in 2012. It got astronomical in 2014 in Canada. 2017 was off the hook. I mean, we're talking about 800, 1,200 deaths per major city. Like, not all major, but some major cities. Vancouver was hit the hardest because Vancouver was completely... You have stacks of complete condominium towers empty, owned by foreign investors. Just leave them empty. Who cares? <coughs> they even had meetings <coughs> in Shanghai where they were selling condos in China, in Canada. Canadian condos for sale in Chi in China. So if you wanted to buy a condo in Vancouver, even Steve Saretsky covered this, you would have to go to China to buy it. You couldn't buy it in Canada. That's a major issue. This is the problem we're facing right now. Uh, the problem we're facing right now is people need to allude or, or be signaled to the matter that this whole thing that we're in right now has nothing to do with what they're saying it is. This has already started years ago, and they need to manage it or put damage control on it. Or damage destruction, so to say. So we've had the people behind all this come forward. We've talked about this on Mike of the Night. That they, what doesn't work. We need a regimen. So a lot of people have been misguided, and I want to wake people up to the fact that that this has been happening way before this because a lot of people are blaming the loss of their jobs on this last two years. They're blaming the loss of the family members on the last two. They're blaming the loss of their uh, defaults on their mortgages and homes on this. They're blaming, but it's not. It was already happening from before. Now, I spoke to a semi-economist money cruncher guy from New Brunswick, and he told me, he's like, Mike, you know, you're on the money 100%. But I want to correct you with one thing. I'm like, go ahead, tell me, please. What am I doing wrong? Tell me. He's like, the problem you're doing is the people that bought in the last nine years, whether it's a condo, a detached, whatever, 
nine years, if they didn't put 50% down nine years ago and made payments religiously on the last nine years on their properties and they put 50% down. So he equated, the, he equated what the prices were nine years ago, what they would have bought at. Provided they put 50% down and they've made payments on their properties for the last nine years, they should be okay when we start hitting double digit inflation and more layoffs start happening and we start hitting stagflation. Stagflation is, is common. It, it, it's no, it's uncommon, especially in Western countries where the price of goods continue to go up, but then job losses are on the, on the rise and everything. You would think if the price of goods go up that the, the manufacturers and the producers will be making more money, but nothing's produced or manufactured in this country. Uh, you know, a majority of our stuff needs to come in from the other side of the world, and it ends up lasting us whenever we buy from China. Either lasts uh, two two hours or two kilometers, depending on what you're using it for. So that's that's the deal. Now, this is the position, and this is why we're in. I urge you to share this video with everybody. People blaming this last two years on. On their default or the, the the downfall of humanity. No, no. We have Janet Yellen the other day saying that this this new virus may cause a financial disruption in the markets. Of course it is. It has to. Not because what they're saying about this new thing has nothing to do with that. They need to find a way to bring this to a halt. So if there's already a lot of people that are already unemployed, there's a lot of people that are already in these positions. Now, but. You're probably wondering, then, what's going to happen now? Well, the government wants to federalize everything. You could see it as plain as day. They want to federalize our shipping. They want to federalize. They want to create socialized medicine in other countries. They don't have it, but they want socialized medicine like Canada. They want to federal, but that's going to cost money, Mike. No, they're just going to push more pharmaceuticals on everybody. So think of it. It's a lockstep puzzle with many pieces and they're all working with each other to create this all works with one another this puzzle here works with one another to create the image and everything is working with one another right now to create the image we are in and what people think they see and everything from the media to big pharma to right to the top. And everyone blaming and families dividing when all they need to know was this is something that happened before. Mismanagement of government funds. Governments are spending more than what they're uh, taxing or making. Uh, they're running these crazy deficits and it's creating this mass destruction of not only the middle class, but it's going to take out the poor middle class and upper middle class now will feel the pinch. They've been feeling it, but if they think that it's over, it's going to get worse. So please, I urge you, share this video. Tell them, look, spend whatever time you need to understand why we're in this position. People feeling down, people with torn families, people that lost family, people that have lost their job. Let them know, hey, buddy. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. The people in power that have let this cockamaniac go on for so long, you know, people that lost family members to fentanyl and opioids, lots of people, lots of families in, in Canada are mourning this, these losses and stuff. And chemicals coming in from China. Well, they don't come in from China anymore, Mike. Well, because the Chinese got smart. They shipped the chemicals to Mexico. Everything gets fabricated in Mexico and brought across open borders in the south. The money gets reinvested into real estate where homes stay empty, where they wipe out the middle class. You know, I love you guys very much. You know, I'm risking a lot uh, doing this and, and making this awareness happen. Sometimes I just I wish I was a little bit smarter and laying out what I'm trying to say in, 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 a, in a better form so people can understand. I really hope you can get this message out there for me and let people know that it's not their fault and it never was their fault. 
you know, oh, well, I have a, some bum teenager, he's a 25 now, and he doesn't stop, well, a lot of people are realizing that, wait, if I do go work 100 hours a week, I still could barely afford to buy food. Where's the motivation? Remember that, folks. Take it to the next step up. Take it right to the top of the pyramid to find out why. Put the puzzle together. Don't miss a single piece. And you'll find out why we're here. And it didn't start two years ago. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Look forward to reading uh, what you guys have to say about this. But please share this video now. Thank you.